this. <laughs> I'm fucking laughing already. Ugh! Nazi-themed host bar <laughs> opens in Osaka. I mean, that's, that's the height of journalism, right? Is that this person's been... How can I make my disdain for the subject matter immediately apparent, but obviously in a professional journalistic way? Ugh! Like, the first word in the headline. That's <laughs> professional journalism right there. The staff wear Nazi uniforms and serve champagne in swastika emblazoned bottles. I mean, you know, if there's, if there's market demand, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I want to see the numbers for this place. I want to know how well it's doing. Uh, at host clubs, men serve customers their drinks, light their cigarettes, and make small talk with them, Matty. Newly opened one in Osaka. They also dress as Nazis. That's pretty fucked up. Uh, the name of the bar is Unfair, and its tagline is Life is a Bet. Reddit spotted a truck tri- driving through Osaka emblazoned with the club's name, and a swastika. <laughs> and, and I'm guessing it was driving through the Minami Entertainment District where Unfair is located. Unfair's listing was posted on host sites Star Guys and Host X Host and included photos of the hosts in <laughs> in full Nazi outfits and the video. Uh, one listing read, Get Intoxicated with This New Style Host Club. Um, is that is that the end? No, it's not the end of the article. Fantastic. Because I want this to keep going. Um, as a Twitter user, Mickey Dezaki, points out, the club also uploaded photos of inside the building. The walls are covered with a large swastika. And the club even had swastika labels affixed to the bottles of champagne. Where you might remember when you're there, you say, uh, tra- you say, tra- tra- glazer. <laughs> right? No, oh, no, wait, no, that's not it. It's that. <laughs> tra- 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 <laughs> Understandably, people pointed out, hey, this is stupid and disgraceful. I don't... Right, now, well, I need to I need to educate you somewhat, right? You know, not everywhere is America, not everywhere is Britain, right? And one thing that is very apparent in Japan, if you watch certain spicy animes like I do, is Japan has a very different attitude towards Nazi Germany. A very different attitude, because they were allied with them during the war, they were friends. Yeah, they were actually, they were friends and allies during the war, so Japan does have a very different attitude towards Nazis. For example, I am a massive fan of Girlzund Panzer. I think it's hilarious and completely over the top. And in Girlzund Panzer, there are different schools that have different themes. For example, you have the American school, you have the British school, you have the Italian school, and you also... Uh, I think that they are these people are actually the antagonists of a see uh, this uh, you know the limited series. You have the German school, and guess guess how the German girls dress, <laughs> and guess what their tanks look like. And also, this has been edited out in uh, the Netflix adaptation, but uh, in the original uncensored, you know the the OG representation when the uh, German school are making their entrance, uh, Erica's playing. You know, bum, bum, bum. That, that's what's playing when the German school makes their entrance, right? And the reason for all of that is because Japan, again, has a very different attitude towards Nazis. So check your privilege. It is a different culture, right? And all cultures are beautiful. So I'm told. Uh, information about the club has been scrubbed from host sites with the host X host page, even though requiring a password for access. Kotaku phoned the bar, but there was no answer. Every few years, shit like this happens. Back in 2016, for example, members of the pop group, I'm not going to try and say that, dressed in Nazi-style uniforms for Halloween. Well, so did Prince Harry. Uh, Six years before that, the cosmetics brand Pons featured an actress dressed as a Nazi in a major ad campaign throughout Japan. The ad was later pulled. It was surprising to see even a major international brand in Japan can let stuff like this slip through. Again, it's it's because of the culture. They do. They perceive Nazis differently than we do. Uh, Besides ignorance... (laughs) 
I think you're the one being very ignorant of other cultures right now. Uh, ambivalence to Nazi iconography, it could also be due to the counterclockwise swastika, or manji as it's called in Japanese. It is traditionally used in Japan on maps to denote Buddhist temples, because uh, as we all know, it's uh, the, the swastika originally was a uh, Buddhist or like Sanskrit symbol, uh, and has a deep, long history that has absolutely nothing to do with Nazis, and that is absolutely true. Um, of course, that's absolutely not the case when swastikas are on Nazi uniforms in a Nazi-themed club. Uh, one thing as well is it is used in uh, Sikhs. Sikhs also uh, use the symbol as well. It is a symbol of uh, good luck and prosperity, and there's a story... A story, I'm not going to say who the person was, but there was a story of a man who was a Sikh uh, and he bought his first car. He bought his first car and his mum and dad, you know, didn't, well, you're going to be racing around in that and you're going to get any accidents and blah, blah, blah. And then his mum and dad said, let us, let us ble get your car blessed for like good luck. And he's like, all right, fucking whatever, we, we shitey, uh, two, 2009 Pe Peugeot 306. And uh, they blessed his car, and when he came out to see after his car had been blessed, it was covered in swastika stickers. Although, obviously, it wasn't the actual swastika, it was their little symbol for good luck. But obviously, this man cannot drive the street. You know, this little Sikh man with his turban on. You know, no one's, no one's going to associate the swastika with it. You know, oh, he's, I see he's got a turban on. You know, the man, man's obviously a Sikh. Uh, no, they're going to go like that, that fucking brown Nazi. <laughs> right, so... He, he immediately uh, scraped all of the stickers off of his car. Uh, however, because he was driving a 2009 piece of shit Peugeot 306, the car broke down and obviously had to take it in to get repairs. He got it towed to a garage and when the, ga the guy lifted the bonnet uh, to go inside the car, the inside of the bonnet uh, was also covered with swastika stickers that he didn't see, <laughs> so he didn't remove them. He then had to have a very, very awkward conversation with the mechanic. I can't. I'm sorry, that's just funny. I won't say his name, but I fucking love that story. But anyway, uh, this is... Uh, I, will, I will absolutely agree that this is somewhat in bad taste. Yes, they, uh, having a Nazi-themed bar, yeah, it's spicy, yeah, it's funny, but... I can I can understand why people uh, would have a little bit of a problem with it. However, you do need to acknowledge that Japan itself it does it does have a very different attitude towards Nazis because they were allied with them during the war, so they don't see the Nazis, you know, as bad guys per se. Like, you know, just different different strokes for different folks. However, if I if I'm ever in Japan, uh, I'm. I probably would go to this place. <laughs>